we're going to look at hardy fuchsias. Now it's important when you say hardy, you know what it means. And when we in gardening say hardy, we mean winter hardy. We don't mean hardy in relation to wind damage or some other uh, maybe to do with not enough light or it means purely the ability of a plant to get through the winter and in Ireland you're talking normally average winter you might get down to minus two minus three about once every 20 years we get a minus we get a minus 15 and then when that happens certain amount of plants like the New Zealand plants that we have will will die but so you can divide hardiness into winter hardiness into plants that will survive every winter and plant and then the second group is plants that will survive most winters and only get caught out maybe four times a century okay um, fuchsias winter are wi some are winter hardy and some are not so we're talking about the hardy fuchsias okay that's hardy fuchsias a lot of fuchsias you get for your summer baskets won't survive the winter or sometimes they might survive the winter but they're in such a bedraggled state at the end of it that they never really get going again the next year. So we'll start off with the common fuchsia, the one that grows wild in the hedgerows in Ireland, particularly in the west of Ireland and the south of Ireland. It's one called Fuchsia Magdalenica Rickertoni and it makes a very good, very very good informal hedge. Not a real tight, perfectly shaped hedge, but if you want an informal hedge. And the thing about it is you can cut it to the ground either every year or every second year, every third year or every whenever. And it will always grow back again. Now, today is the 25th of September and fuchsias are late, star late, late starters into flower, but then they keep going on for a long, long time. And that, the problem with the small flowered fuchsias is... is the, because of the peculiar the colour of the flowers, the red and the purple, they tend to disappear a little into the pl uh, from a distance into the into the plant. It's, they're not that showy. The bigger flowered fuchsias are definitely showier, but they need better conditions. Now that's north facing, so that thing will grow anywhere. But the bigger flowered fuchsias. I believe they need to be a su in a sunnier position so they get off early and the soon as they start flowering the longer they will flower so you want them to be flowering from about we will say certainly early July so you get July August September up until the first frost in October and sometimes if you're by the sea or in a mild place they might even flower right until Christmas now we look at we're going to look at a, first of all a variety of this around the corner a particularly nice plant and then we're going to look at the large flowered ones. Oh, the garden is starting. Oh, look at this here. Look, look at this here. Oh. That's a red hot poker. And it's called Nyphophia coalescens. And it's, it flowers much later than most red hot pokers. And it is a far better plant because it has very good foliage. Most red hot pokers have fairly indifferent foliage. In fact, the foliage is a, a very much a minus uh, a point with them. But these foliage is very actually like a yucca plant, and even without flowering, they're they are good. So Nyphophia calescens, generally not that readily available. It's well worth having. Here we are, and as you can see, this is a small flowered fuchsia. It's variegated. As a general rule, uh, the real garden aficionados, they don't like variegated plants because they find them a little bit vulgar, a bit brash and in your face. But the very good garden writer, he's, he's dead a good while now, uh, Graeme Stewart, Stewart Thomas, and he loved this plant. And because Graeme, if it's good enough for Graeme, Graeme Stewart Thomas, it's good enough for me. He, he just always raved about this plant. and. So, and I, under, I couldn't really understand why, because it's variegated, but whatever it is, it's not brash, and the, and the light foliage, I'll take a piece, away, I'll take a piece, the flower seems to show up better against the light foliage. Now, it, we have it here, and it's, it's not in full, it's not properly, I don't think it's, it's a good enough spot for it. So we're going to move it, and we're going to put it here. 
we're going to take up the, that lovely variegated Arundel Donax and put it put it in which probably where it can be appreciated better it's just too it's just too crowded in there it shouldn't be like that that's the way it should that's the way it should be up like that and there should be lots of it and it should be surrounded by smaller plants so it can make a proper statement so anyway we're going to probably do this here something like that we dig all this out and we put our fuchsia right here and it's south facing so that's a job for the spring now we look at the the, the larger flowered fuchsias I remember we planted that about about two weeks ago and it's finally starting to flower the 25th of September uh, the liatris and I, I think it's going to give us a lovely split display right into the end of October next year it will flower much earlier and this is a larger flowered one it's called Mrs Popple and it's probably uh, the easiest and the best of the larger flowering ones in the, in the sense that it always grows and it always works I would give it I would give it better conditions I'd give it a, a more southerly aspect than the smaller flowered ones now you can see the difference in the flower Miss, Mrs Popple is interesting uh, I particularly like it because the story behind it it was found um, it was spotted in the garden of a Mrs Popple by a well-known nurseryman in the, the end of the 19th century he was at a tennis party as you do and he asked Mrs Popple about it and she said uh, I don't know where it came from we've had it in our garden for ages now given that the fuchsias come from South America maybe one of our forebearers was a, was a sea captain or something and brought a little bit back in his luggage but anyway uh, he asked could he have a few bits and he propagated it and called it Mrs Popple and that's it once upon a time in a in a garden where there was a tennis party when I when I when I think of that I always think of Mrs. Popple and and um, sort of Tim's number one and all the stuff they would have had. I don't think they had a Robinson's orange juice in those days for the tennis parties. But anyway, that's a very easy one. Um, the, the, the main problem I have with it is this is very close to that. The purple is very close to the red. I prefer the ones with the white. We have a white one down here. We'll have a look at the white one finish the video. This is called snow cap and you can see the way the white is a much better contrast to the red and we have it facing full south against a very warm wall next to a stripy fig because we wanted to make progress and there we, it's only planted about, about four months and it's still got loads of buds and it should flower once again right up into November so that's the, so to recap again the small flowered fuchsias will grow anywhere the big flowered fuchsias which are more exciting to look at give them extra sun even though in the books it doesn't say that but definitely give them a, a warm sunny spot in the garden they are worth the trouble